Okay, very good. Okay, so let's begin slowly but steadily. It's not a long session. There's uh, only 71 slides considered short by my standards. Okay, yeah, I have a live audience, by the way, just one. Nancy Lee. Can you sit in front a little bit? Yeah, at least I, I can pretend I'm talking to someone. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, navigating through crisis. Uh, for some of you, this might be the first crisis in your career. And uh, you might be a bit lost. You might be afraid. Uh, you may feel that, oh no, is this the end? Are you going to last through all these things? Okay, so don't worry. Um, um, I have lasted through two corrections in the market. Uh, the major one being GFC, Global Financial Crisis. That was uh, just two years plus into my career. And then the next one was not really a crisis, but an internally triggered TDSR, right? Slow down the market a tremendous bit in 2013. So that also slowed the market from 2013 all the way to 2016, a lot less transaction volume. But see, I'm still here. 15, almost, no, 14, 14 years. Now I start to count slower already. 14 years in this line, still surviving, all right? So there are a lot of things that you should know and I wish I knew when I was navigating those crises. But at that point, I was still young. I did not have a lot of experience. Uh, neither did I have a lot of team support enough to tell me what to do, what not to do, how to change my technique and how to still get engagement and leads during times like that, okay? In all times, uh, okay, for real estate agents, it's important to know that the worst type of market is one that is stagnant, where prices don't go up and prices don't go down. They are just stagnant. Buyer and seller on different sides of the fence, they're just waiting for, to see who will give way first. Those are times where it's hardest to transact because there's no pressure. There's no urgency from either side. So now in today's market, what is the context that's happening? Right? We all know. Um, before Chinese New Year, if you, you heard my session, I was saying that there were three insights to explore your sales in 2020, right? And then uh, it was very, very uh, rosy, in fact end of 2019, 2020, early 20, is very rosy. And then suddenly, bam, something happened, right? We call it the what? What is this? It's not a London duck, okay? Yeah, I know you look at this, you might think it's a London duck, especially who Ryan and all those foodies, right? Okay, it's not a London duck. This is a black swan, okay? What happened was a black swan event happened. So we have been talking about black swan event, black swan event, black swan event, and 迟早都会发生, okay? For thus, um, sooner or later, it will happen. Okay, so this really did happen and nobody expected this to be so serious. So what do we call it? We call it the COVID-19. Uh, in the past, how many weeks already? Uh, since 23rd January when it exploded and uh, started to um, come into Singapore and everything. Uh, so far, so good, right? So far, so good. I hope you are safe where you are. I uh, hope you're taking your precautions or so. That's why we are doing this online. Uh, so far, Singapore's government has done very well. I believe you can agree to that, right? Some people say, do what? Voting now. Straight away, walk over, win already. Don't need to vote already, okay? But let's leave that aside for our politics for now, okay? But Singapore's government, in fact, has done a very good job in controlling, in maintaining, the, managing the crisis. And a lot of people around the world, foreigners, are very, very impressed with us. Uh, meaning that in the long run, when the crisis is over, guess what? There's one more reason why people really want to buy Singapore. Because ultimately, you can have all the money in the world, but if it's not safe and the government doesn't take preemptive steps to take care of your health, all the money in the world doesn't help. So there are a lot more people around the world who should be looking at, to Singapore as a safe haven after this crisis, okay? So, now, with COVID-19, I know we are all fearful, and these are some questions, in fact, with no answers at the moment, okay? The truth is, uh, I spent many hours preparing for this session, and uh, sadly, uh, last night, uh, after working on one segment for over three hours, uh, I deleted everything. I deleted everything, because I realized that I was trying to give you answers to things where there are no answers to at this point in time. And it will be impossible for anyone in good conscience, okay, uh, whether we are leaders at driving sales and helping you to stay motivated, whether we have the best intentions, it is irresponsible for us to cause certain, um, cause certain scenarios yeah, when there are no answers. So what are these answers that I found ultimately when I, I did all the research? Uh, what was lacking? Okay, very simple. Number one, how long will this last? No one knows. PM Lee did say something. He said it will last until end of the year, right? End of year, at least, at least. And then uh, in the media today, uh, he mentioned that it could go on for quite a few years, passing around the world, and then finally before it stops, because it will take some time to go to all the countries, uh, spread around all the countries. Okay, can we control the spread of this uh, of new cases in Singapore? 
Okay, right now we are doing pretty good. I know in the next one month, uh, if there's a risk because uh, there's a lot of people, 200,000 Singaporeans are supposed to come back to Singapore. Wow, that's a huge risk. And we even have friends not right now at stay, uh, what is, is it stay home order or quarantine at uh, Shangri-La? Chris Quack, if you're online. Oh, solid man. I believe for the rest of your life, you won't stay there anymore, right? <laughs> <laughs> you won't want to stay there. But, uh, okay. The brani very nice. The, the brani very nice. Uh. Oh, okay, good. The brani is very nice uh, if you get to go down to the lobby and order. I don't know whether room service offers that. Anyway, okay, can we control the spread of new cases? Question mark, right? Nobody can uh, tell exactly for now. But uh, so far, so good, right? In Singapore, we can say that we are controlling pretty well. Yes, the number of unlinked cases are, are rising. And that's why more measures have to be taken, uh, to be taken dra uh, draconianly so that we can stem the spread. And at the end of the day, you and me, everyone, we rather a short-term pain than a long-term pain. Okay? Can our neighbours control? Very important also because we are so reliant on external trade, right? Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, and all sorts of people will have to come in sooner or later because we need foreign help. We need uh, a lot of jobs need to be filled by them. So can they control also affects whether we can control and take care of Singaporeans and our economy in the long run. And lastly, will job losses balloon before COVID is controlled? Okay, the difference in essence uh, with this crisis, COVID versus AFC, GFC, what's the essence? The difference is this time round, there's a lack of consumption by everybody. Lack of consumption by everybody. Very dangerous. Why? Because... Well, we cannot go out and spend money, right? We are supposed to stay home because everybody's fearful for their life. From, so whether you are doing well in this crisis, you have a lot of money uh, uh, parked somewhere, you have funds to invest and everything, you also cut down on spending. You're not going down out as much. You don't want your kids to go out as much. You're not going to buy a, a luxury car in this market. Most likely, most people won't do that. You're not going to uh, spend on buying fancy food stuff in this market, especially a fancy food watch and discretionary spending, right? So that's... A major difference in global financial crisis in AFC, people were still out and about spending. Some people who were, of course, caught by the financial crisis, they couldn't spend. Of course, they got to downgrade. They got to uh, uh, have uh, more austerity measures to 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 protect their uh, bottom line, their pockets. But there were people who were still relatively safe. They were conservative in nature. They were still out spending money. So this time round is different because of consumption. And that's where the, the, the budget this time round really needs to address. And it's different from the rest of crisis because of this. So fundamentally, is there a problem in the system now? Financial system? No, there isn't. We started off 2020 being very, very rosy. Everything was going very fine, very well. So this is really um, a different kind of crisis we are facing. Probably one of the uh, uh, new challenges in the, in the world we face. Even as the leaders of a country will say, it's something no one will expect. It's something that is... Um, uh, outside of their normal uh, ways of uh, handling. Okay, so again, uh, prior to this session in uh, January, I also shared with you this uh, about government patterns, right? And I said that, hey, you know what? Don't worry. Every crisis, 1985 economic crisis, 1997 AFC, Asian financial crisis, global financial crisis, they always will pump money in to stimulate the market to make sure people are gainfully employed, they get their jobs back ASAP, people go out and spend, they shop confidence before, because asset values start to increase, stock market starts to go up, uh, uh, home prices start to go up, people feel safe and good to get into the water. All right, so what I didn't expect was this time round, the budget is so big. Okay, the last round in 2008, it was just 13.6 billion. Uh. This time round, how big is it? Uh? Four times more. Machiam what? Four times GFC happened together at the same time. Okay, it's 50 over $54.8 billion budget to solve this. How many zeros is that? I also don't know. I lost count. Okay, but it's so massive. Basically, the government is saying that we will do all we can to make sure people survive. They have to first retain their jobs. We have to solve the virus so that people will go out and spend. If the economy is spending, no matter what, things will resolve itself. And then you will find that the markets are confident and uh, uh, asset prices uh, and investments can go up. And it's good for the long-term economy of Singapore to, to achieve that. Okay, what happened in the US? So US is like a late, uh, you know, late season of uh, a few months slower than us, right? Okay, from, from the Wuhan virus to uh, become a Singapore, Singapore and Asia got it. And then to Italy and then to US is like kind of playing, what do you call that? A series of... Uh, uh, unfortunate events, <laughs> a series of unfortunate events, but in uh, in a wave, a very slow wave. Okay, so what happened in US? US also pumped a lot of money in, a record two trillion dollars. They have already said that we will also do all we can, basically do all we can, meaning what? 
pump as much money as required to float the banking system, to make sure banks lend to people and businesses, to make sure people and businesses have money to spend and pay their bills, to make sure they can be gainfully employed, and then to make sure that they can rise on their feet again before they cut down stimulus. Yeah. So what is money? What is money backed by? I want to refresh you because I'm not too sure you heard about this, uh, this uh, one of my training before, but what is money backed by? Before 1970, the US dollar was backed by gold. After 1970, the US dollar is no longer backed by gold. You can print as much as you want just to float the system. Okay? And that is called a fiat currency. F-I-A-T, not a car. Fiat, fiat is a, yeah, it's a car, I know, but it's a fiat currency. So, around the world, uh, fiat currencies begin to, um, to, to, to spread. And now, even Sing dollar is not based on gold. Sing dollar, you can print as much as you want as long as you flood it just nice. Flood whatever you need for the market, but don't over flood it such that it becomes banana notes. Okay, so what the world is effectively saying, uh, and not only uh, Singapore and US, Europe, Italy, Rome, UK, everyone, they are pumping money into the whole system. Yes, there can be unintended consequences as a result, but it is more likely than not that this crisis will be solved. This storm will pass uh, in no time at all. Okay. The reality of the situation, okay, so uh, our DPM, Heng Sui Kit, says that uh, the amount of money what we are pumping in is really to retain, protect jobs and livelihoods. Because with that, then the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the economy can get back on its feet. So at this point, we can see the go uh, government is on a tight road, right? This is a price index, probably price index. You can use it to uh, simulate any index for the matter, stock market, the economy, GDP and everything, okay? But for this context, it is probably stuck. Probably market. So there are global, global fund inflows, there are strengths in the economy, there are global uncertainties, threatening to uh, hit our people off balance. Okay? We are probably someone uh, like a kind of uh, sitting on the shoulders of this person who is doing the tightrope. And uh, what structural measures are there? The good thing is, okay, there have been a lot of market stabilizers along the way. Okay, it's not like in Asian financial crisis or global financial crisis. There were not many structural measures to safeguard the market, right? Back then, there weren't so many. That's why the market can collapse quite a bit, okay? TDSR came in only in 213. So with TDSR, people are a lot more prudent because they can't just buy and take any loan they want. They have to be very careful. MSR for HDB, they also can't take any loan they want. There's a cap, which is in the past not available. So people are a lot more um, can, sorry, people can afford more these days than before. Okay? Loan to valuation limits ensure that people are not over leveraged. Right? In the past, again, we have 90% loan, 80% loan, now it's 75% loan, second property is what? 50, 45% loan. So it's so low, it's so low that ah, the risk is not very high. And most don't make money, people hold and then let it rent out for a while. They won't just cut losses and sell because they don't have, they are not over leveraged. Okay? GLS supply, you can bet that in the near term, GLS supply should be cut short because there will be no interest or the focus shouldn't be on that. Okay? And uh, uh, bidders might not be interested to bid anyway. So GSS supply controls the market, is what part of the market lever to bring up prices or to lower prices. In the long run, is it important for prices to go up? I want to ask you. Is it important okay, in the long run? Yes, right? Why? Because 90% of Singaporeans okay, have a home. We are homeowner. We are homeowner state. We are not like uh, many of the other countries, let's say Italy or in uh, Australia, when it's common to rent rather than own. So when you let prices go down, it doesn't really affect people that much. In Singapore, most people own houses. Okay? And a lot of our wealth are tied into houses, into homes. If it drops too much, people lose faith in the government's ability to protect them. And also they don't have the uh, confidence to spend and it affects the whole economy as a result. So prices must be kept steady and upwards. I know this time round, the unity budget, the resilience budget, we didn't really get any goodies, right? I was quite disappointed. I know I was unreasonable, but I was still disappointed, okay? And, uh, but why? Because the property market isn't going through any um, hardship at this point. The focus is on aviation industry, on tourism, on retail, on hospitality, on areas where they really need help immediately because they are so cash flow sensitive. For property industry, not really. Okay, and not to mention that recently we also had some stimulus, but the stimulus came in the form of what? HDB grants, enhanced HDB grants. Those grants are, are there to help people, they're actually, actually pouring money to the HDB resale market so people can have more funds to buy 
Okay, and also to get out, they have more cash in hand, more funds as a result of the grants, and then they can buy and afford more in the private market. So you see, those are actually stimulus already there, uh, but they call it a different thing. They don't call it a budget. All right. So, hey, okay, wait, wrong, wrong device. Okay. So let's take a look at Asian financial crisis, a summary. Okay. So for those of you who are too young, okay, too young to understand, like for example, Nancy, Nancy was probably uh, two or three years old then. <laughs> Uh, 18, 18, okay, 18. Okay, so Asian financial crisis summary. Let's take a look at what happened then. Some parts are a little bit small, but I ask for your uh, attention so that I can brief you through them, all right? So in the AFC, Asian financial crisis, market volume, okay, market volume. Most important is market volume, right? For us, we need transactions volume, okay? Go up 100,000, go down 100,000 is okay as long as there's transaction. Okay, transaction volume came back within nine months. You can see that transaction volume after the AFC, okay, this is in July 2, 1997. Uh, if you go and Wikipedia it, you will know when the time, uh, uh, when the impact of this, uh, this uh, contagion was felt. So 1997, July, prices, uh, volume came down, okay, zigzag. We have the yellow line. Yellow line is uh, for your sake, OCR, yellow line. So the most volume. Green line is RCR. The blue one is CCR. Nine months later, volume started to pick up again. Okay, not so bad. At least Singapore government pumped a lot of money into the economy at that point in time and it brought back volumes. Okay, CCR went back up to uh, 43% over the uh, 100 percent sorry, uh, beyond higher than 43% higher than the initial uh, volume before the crisis hit. Uh, RCR went up 14%, OCR went up 56%. Okay, so volumes came back within nine months. Can we safely project that this crisis is the same? Unfortunately, no. I wish I could tell you that, but unfortunately, no. But at least this is to let you see over major crises what really happened okay, to Singapore's market. Maybe it's nine months, maybe it's one year, maybe it's one and a half years before you recover. God knows. But at least you have certain timelines. So at this point in time, you also want to ration and fight the, your battle slow and steadily. Okay, so you don't overspend, you ration your funds, you be very careful with what you choose to spend on. Okay. So next, let's take a look at average per square feet during the AFC. Okay, landed prices went down 34% okay, during Asian financial crisis. Non-landed went down 30%. So both were affected. Okay, so uh, the, the green line is non-landed. The blue line is landed. Don't worry, okay, later on I'll update all these slides onto the link up uh, and you will be able to download them and look through them in detail. Okay, according to region, what happened? The CCR corrected 39%. Okay, the RCR corrected 42%, eh? more than CCR. Usually CCR corrects more, but well, in this case, RCR corrected slightly more. OCR corrected the least 26%. Okay, I want to pause for a moment. Why would OCR correct the less, the least usually? Most times. Why? Think about it. <clears throat> okay, um, you pause for a while. I just uh, let you think about it. Why would OCR correct the least? If you have the answer, please type into the group chat, okay, into the comments. Why would OCR usually correct the least while CCR correct the usually the most? La. In this case, only is RCR corrected slightly more. Why? Okay, if you have the answer, type it in. I will give you the answer later anyway, okay? So, take a look at the volumes. Which are the least hit private district volumes during the 97 crisis? To do this, I took one year trailing, one year, 12 months trailing um, uh, volume trends, for individual districts, and one uh, 12 months after the July 97 crisis, the trends, okay, to see whether volumes were affected. Surprisingly, okay, the least affected private districts are D25. From 29 units 12 months before, private, non landed okay, to 260 after, okay, a difference of almost 800%, eight times more. Why? Okay, District 25, where is that? Test, where is that? District 25, come on. Is it Chachukang? Is it Lim Chukang? Okay, it's Woodlands Emirati, yeah. Okay, so Woodlands Emirati side prices, uh, sorry, volume went up a lot twelve months after. Okay, I did not investigate into the why, but it could be because at that point, um, there were probably a lot of uh, private properties there, maybe a lot of condos there. Okay, that were unsold, and because of their location, uh, they reduced in price and they became very sought after by people maybe downgrading and then they found out hey, there's a lot of supply there and the prices are very reasonable so they downgrade there. It could be that way. Okay, but this is the rare thing that happened in uh, AFC. D26, okay, from 158 to 233 volume, 
Okay, these are the least hit districts. Ah, D twenty three, Chuan Chu. D twenty six is where? Ah? I can't remember suddenly. D twenty six is where? Uh, Yochukang. Okay, Tago and Yochukang. Good. Okay, D twenty three is Bukit Panjang area, right? Mm. Uh, Bukit Batok, Chua Chu Kang, Bukit Panjang, D23. Volume also went up. D5, okay, volume also went up slightly. Uh, D19, volume went up slightly. D14, D22, D4, D20, D9, D11 at the bottom. Uh. Okay, you will realize the top few, uh, most of them are what? They are areas where you will find a lot more owner occupiers, right? Not so much investors. So these areas are a lot more resilient in the market. That's facing a crisis. So in this market, you will also want to focus on, um, on a mark on, on a sector. Okay, if you have no chosen sector or GTA and you have no volume, okay, you might want to choose areas where there's a lot of own stay, owner occupiers, upgraders, MOP HDBs. These are areas that will carry on moving even in the slowest market, because people will suddenly have a baby, uh, people will find the house too small, people will need uh, you know to stay near the parents for support. This goes on despite any financial crisis or any crisis for that matter. All right. So the hardest hit volumes in the AFC, which one were they? D7, town area, Beach Road. Okay, D1. D1 got hit 60%, 73%, first one 60%. D28, interestingly, D28 uh, got hit 60% also. D18, okay, D10 also dropped 52%. D17, D2, okay, D8, D13. Okay, so they dropped quite a bit. This, so if you refer back and forth, you will find the hardest hit districts and the lowest hit districts, the least hit districts. Later, I will do the same for GFC, Global Financial Crisis, so that you can see whether your district that you're focusing on right, is uh, safe or not in the next one year, okay, or the next, uh, at least the next few months, uh, to, uh, which, whenever the crisis settles itself. Okay? So HDB price trend during the AFC, Okay, we can see that average per square feet came down. Okay, average per square feet came down 22%. Alright, but okay, despite average per square feet going down, let's take a look at the volume. Look at the volume. The volume before AFC uh, was about 2,000 plus okay, for the month of July. August 2008, September, it dropped. Okay, so it dropped here, September, and then it started to go up all the way. So it went more and more. Transaction volume started to increase a lot. Possibly also because some people wanted to cash out, get some funds back to solve their problems, maybe solve their stocks debt or their other debts or lose, uh, they lost their jobs and so on. Possibly. Okay, but volume recovered within three months. Okay, so we had a private market recovering within nine months and then the HDB market recovering within three months. Okay, global financial crisis. Similarly, let's take a look at the corrections in volume, price, and then uh, which are hardest hit. So the volume during GFC, okay, it lasted about 1.5 years, one and a half years before we saw volumes coming back again. One and a half years, okay? And uh, this was worse, okay, than the AFC. And then we have CCR, region correcting 66%, quite a bit, huh? okay, quite a bit. RCR correcting 47%. OCR correcting very, very little, 13%. Very little, okay? So this took uh, one and a half years. What happened then to the average PSF? Okay, landed prices corrected only 18.5 this time round. The other time it was uh, the AFC was 30 over percent. Now it's only 18%. non landed corrected 38%, almost the same as uh, during the AFC, 30 over percent. Okay, both of them have corrections. In terms of the region, right? We have uh, CCR uh, correcting 47%, RCR correcting 20%, and OCR correcting 14%. Once again, uh, and I think just now some of you mentioned, right, because most investment properties, Elvin Koo mentioned, most investment properties are in CCR, RCR, thus uh, investors at that point are more willing to sell, okay, because they are affected by investment in stocks, margin calls, you know, stocks that's margin calls whenever volumes, uh, whenever prices drop. But real estate, so far, usually they don't have any margin call. Okay, so uh, yes, uh, Brian also said that mostly our own stay. Yes, own stay people can afford to tahan. They need a roof over their head anyway, right? So they won't sell. As long as they just don't sell, they don't realize losses. Okay, very interesting point to add in here. Some people now uh, are selling their properties at a discount. Not because they are losing money, uh, but because they feel that 
if I park this same amount into a stock at this point in time, not SIA, uh, SIT, I think a bit risky, okay? But uh, maybe uh, the bank stocks, DBS stocks, OCBC, UOB stocks, okay, they won't go down, right? Okay, usually they won't, all right? So uh, then they will make more money than if they keep into their real estate. Because some real estate, if you, you know uh, and have seen from slides, some properties have already stagnated for a long time already. So it doesn't grow over the past 10 years. Unlikely to suddenly grow, right? In this crisis. So they might as well, I have stagnated for so long already. Might as well, I sell at a bit of discount, 5 10% off, uh, but I put this money into some other uh, funds or some other uh, stocks that have a chance to rally. Or they put into PNG, they put into Clor uh, Clorox. Clorox is doing well with their stocks because they, they, are, they are doing all this uh, hand sanitizer and uh, chemical cleaning equipment. Okay, So, just a point to note. Uh, so, uh, in GFC, o OCR did fairly good. Okay, so if you have if you have clients who are buying or sitting on the fence for OCR properties, not to worry. Okay, you can also assure them that usually even in a major crisis like global financial crisis, uh, OCR market don't go down a lot. So even you you want to wait and time the bottom, you may not even get the bottom. Rather, at that point in time, you have more people coming out and chasing after the same units with you and lesser choice of units. Okay, so lease hit private district by volume. Uh, we have uh, during the GFC the volume drop uh, more than AFC. Okay, so once again you can see here you will see a lot of the same districts that are least hit and they are where they are outside core or places suburban areas. Some of them are us, yeah, but they are usually places where people stay, Singaporean stay. Okay, so least hit is least hit, but they are still pretty badly hit. Huh? Okay, now we move on to hardest hit. Hardest hit districts, district one. Okay, definitely you have a lot of investors there. And they rent to who? Expats. The investors are the ones who are more risky, right? Cowboys, investors, more risk taking. They drop by 76% in number of sold units. A lot, district one. Okay. D10, also a lot of investors got uh, got hurt. Okay, D3, okay, D3 surprisingly, but because uh, probably they're nearer to town, there's still a lot of investment demand there. Okay, D9, D4, Capo area, D7, Beach Road area, D13. Okay, D13 is the Bredo Heights area. Okay, uh, D2 also. So, these are the worst hit. So, it's for you to understand so that you have some, uh, you, un you understand where the market volume is going to go. Okay, things will, may come into this or hopefully it falls between AFC and GFC. So, not so bad. Hopefully. Okay, so what happened to the HDB price trend during the global financial crisis then? Okay, HDB price trend went up, you see? 08, eh, sorry, 07, the start of the uh, global financial crisis, August, okay, when the contagion started to spread seriously, you can see that the per square feet for HDB went up, went up, went up, went up, went up, went up, went up all the way until February 09. Okay, it went up 20%, it didn't go down. Surprise. Okay, now how about the volume? Okay, volume initially dropped a little bit, okay, from 2005 all the way down to about 1009, okay, and then it bounced back up, down, up, down, it's basically there, la. transaction volume is there, people were not so worried. So, HV market volume returned within three months. Yes, there was a slight downtrend maybe overall, but volume is still there, very healthy, okay. So, uh, volume dropped by 10%, but prices went up by 20%. Okay, where can we expect things to go subsequently? Okay, now from this is O3, markets went up, 15 quarters went down very fast in the financial crisis. Okay, global financial crisis, six quarters went down. It went up 82%, it went down 18%. Okay, every time it corrects, it corrects less than it goes up. Okay, that's very important to know. It corrects, doesn't correct a lot. Right? Why? Because cost goes up things get more expensive. So it goes down a little bit, people already can't, can't go beyond low already. They find that they can't replace their unit if they sell. Okay, so uh, went up again, 19 quarters, 40%. And now where are we? We are somewhere here, 2020 first quarter. Moving forward, how much down are we going to see? How much downtrend are we going to see? How many quarters is this going to be? No one knows. It's unanswered. I don't have the answer for you. Okay, but what we can be, what we can be more sure of is once it's settled, it should bounce back very, very strongly. Very strongly. Okay? Because there'll be so much pent-up demand by people wanting to flush in their money again into Singapore system. There'll be so much confidence being built back into Singapore based on how we handled the crisis. And market prices will go up a lot more again. Okay? So when can we time the bottom? Can we? We can't. 
not possible. Nobody can. Okay, but as long as it meets a certain criteria, maybe in our minds we have to know beyond a certain maybe ten percent correction can go in already. Maybe fifteen percent correction or or even developers uh, are taking a, a lot less profit when they sell. Right? For example, copper they are selling at two one per square feet. To me, it's a steal in the area. Brand new launch, it's a steal. Okay, so if you're able to find launches like that or resale properties with a discount already straight away, then you may not need to wait until the bottom to buy. Later, I'll do an analysis to show you also buying now versus buying later. Okay, what's the difference? If it corrects now, or I get a deal with 10% discount now versus I wait two years for it to correct another 10%, 20% total. How much money do I really make versus the risk of missing out again in a decade long opportunity? Okay, if you realize that uh, 1985 something happened, 1997 something happened, 2008 something happened, 2020 something happened. It's almost like 10, 12 years something happened, right? Okay, so, 人生几个十到十二年. If you miss this chance, can you buy the next round? Chances are it will go up and down a higher high, a low, a higher low as well, right? Remember, it will start going higher. It corrects, but it's a higher, higher low than before. As per even our older charts. It's just going to be more expensive, correct a little bit. So you, you may not, and your client may not be able to wait so long. Okay, so I just want to summarize this part before we move on to other another segment. Okay. First, okay, recovery for both crises took an average of nine to nine months to one and a half years. Okay, OCR has the highest resilience, correcting the least averagely by 20%, okay, 14% and 20 over percent. Okay, OCR corrects the least. RCR corrected averagely 31%. CCR corrected the most, 40 over percent. Okay. OCR and RCR corrected less compared to CC, uh, CCR, likely due to owner occupier majority. Some of you have already guessed it and very well done, very good. Okay. Singapore's 90% home ownership rate uh, means that it's less possible for huge market swings to happen, especially in the owner occupied majority regions. So if you own a property in the outside core areas or the suburban areas where owner occupied properties are the, the majority, right? You can rest assured. Likelihood is your neighbors also won't just want to fire sale it. Yes, there will be deals like that. There will be people who are caught up in difficult times. They will. They have to. But very likely with our stability in the market, with all the structural measures in place like TDSR and everything I covered earlier, it won't go down by much. Okay? Now, let's go through the next session. Uh, the next thing. Okay, we also have to remember some fundamentals. Who's going to drive the market in this climate? Not the investors anymore, not the foreigners. It will definitely be the locals. And who, which local? The HDB upgraders. Okay, this chart is for you to understand that, hey, in the next uh, few years, okay, now 2020, yeah, 2021, 2020, 2021, 2020, 2022, right? There are 30,000 people who will have their uh, MOP, averagely. Yeah? And this is more than 10,000, the usual average supply of MOP in the last 10 years. And this should keep your OCR, RCR R market more buoyant because upgraders have to buy. Upgraders will buy something on. Once their money is out of HDB, they will find somewhere to park their funds. Having made money from, having made money from where? From property before, they are very likely to go back into the property market. Okay? So, find upgraders to work with. You will find that, hey, they are the ones who can afford to buy and are re more ready to buy. Okay, next. HDB grants, as I mentioned earlier, this was a stimulus to the HDB market, to the property market as a whole, okay, way before the budgets came out. Okay, with the enhanced HDB stimulus, okay, it's very unlikely for HDB, which are usually owner-occupied, to drop significantly in value. Alright, so recently I sold a few HDBs, okay, and these HDBs I sold are all above valuation. They okay, are all above valuation, and they are young people coming to buy, surprisingly. Why? Because they have the grants help them to save a lot of money down so they have some cash that they can afford to pay COV and they don't mind. Okay, so it's very unlikely for uh, values to drop significantly. Maybe a little bit correction just because conf confidence is affected but not much. Next, remember we have very high occupancy rate, huh? very high. Huh? At, the, uh, at the last point of uh, writing it was 94% high occupancy rate. Okay, so with high occupancy rate, landlords, do they need to sell urgently? No, right? They don't, right? They don't. Okay, unless, unless something happens where a lot of tenants have to resign at once. Okay, in time to come, we won't know. If certain sectors start to re retrench people and their staff have to go back home, then yes, it could happen. But as of now, 
there is no report yet of uh, low occupancy rates or a lot of people being retrenched and terminated and sent back home. And uh, for that, correction should be mild for the time being. Okay, Whatever I say right now, uh, it could be by tomorrow or next week, uh, irrelevant anymore. I know that. Okay? And you'll probably be thinking that also. It's possible because the situation is changing so much. But what I know as of now is what I'm telling you. So if you need to update any clients, use all this at least to the point until things change. TDSR, remember, since 2013, people have been having better holding power than before. Last time there was no TDSR, people could just loan and loan and leverage and leverage. And when it came time for uh, the, the crisis to hit them, they had to deleverage very fast to stay solvent, to avoid bankruptcy. And that was why AFC, GSC was really bad for some people. Okay, So in this market, we don't see that. So your clients should be more uh, at peace that, hey, we have more structural measures in place and they shouldn't, be, uh, they shouldn't be so affected or so scared of entering the market now. Low interest rate environment, I know you all know this, but also to reinforce that sub 2%, now it's about 1.4 to 1.7%, depending on the package, is a record low still for Singapore. Okay, And our interest rate is going to be so low still? Yes, of course, it's going to be there for a while. US just started to have their issues. They just cut interest rates like uh, in an emergency meeting and they just really cut it so low. Now the world is following them. Uh, Singapore is still following them. So with low interest rates, with tenants, landlords are very unlikely to just uh, force sell their properties. Okay? As long as nobody starts to force sell together in herds, uh, in, in groups, uh, it's likely the whole economy will stay very strong. Okay, let's go next. The government can do all, uh, will do all it can to prop up the market. Okay, uh, property values, like as mentioned earlier, affect the average Singaporean sentiments because most of our money, our wealth is locked into properties. Okay, and our discretionary spending, uh, whether we spend more out tonight, having drinks, having beer, another tower or not, depends. Okay, on whether we feel confident of the economy. Okay, and if it's not confident, uh, we are not confident, and we don't spend much, government will face other issues uh, in the whole economy, broader economy. So can the government allow prices to fall significantly? That's the question. Okay? When you deliver to clients, you might also want to ask them questions in, in between. Let them breathe a little bit, digest a little bit, think for themselves and answer. Uh, because if you keep feeding them answers, they may not buy. Some people like to derive their own answers. That's the way they, uh, people are wired. All right? So can government allow property prices to drop significantly? Do you think they will have a, a sudden stop if prices really start to go down a lot? For example, if tomorrow uh, a lot of private properties start to go on fire sale, fire sale, fire sale, do you think government will do something? You can bet that they would because people will start to panic and you don't want a panic sell situation just like toilet paper situation, right? It's bad for everybody. A panic sell situation in properties means that foreign investors will even dump more than uh, more than not because they don't even stay here they are more worried than the average Singaporean so government would never do, allow that to happen if it drops so significantly they will likely have a backstop something to prop it up again just that it is not at this point in time maybe six months now down the road maybe nine months down the road we don't know but the property market will definitely benefit from certain uh, measures in time to come not now we are not directly affected yet but in time to come okay so how should you look at the current crisis Okay, I'm, sh I'm sure some of you know this. Okay, Wei Ji, Wei Ji, Wei means danger for those uh, non-Chinese friends. Ji, opportunity. Okay, Wei Ji put together is actually uh, like an yin and yang thing. When there's danger or there's risk, there's crisis, there are also opportunity. What opportunities are out there for you? Okay, let's take a look. Opportunities for you to profit from a crisis. These are some insights you can start to share with your clients. And by sharing, I mean some of them, uh, sometimes you, you, you have to uh, reach out to clients, especially now. They are being, they are so free, their eyeballs are everywhere on YouTube, on uh, Facebook, on news channels, looking for answers. Okay, hang on. Eh? Okay, they are all looking for answers. And uh, what they read is likely to be all negative, unless there are certain agents out there educating them. So you want to be in front of your client's eyeball because they are so free right now. Okay, so how do you do that? First, of course, you follow up. Ask them, hey, how are you? How is it affecting you? Some people may have lost their jobs. They won't, they won't just come and tell you, hey, you know what, Nancy, I lost my job. What should I do? Uh, they won't. But if you touch base, are you okay? Is your job at risk? 
you have, you have a cut in your allowance or your salary. If you have friends who are flying, pilots or uh, uh, stewardess, stewards, uh, they will suffer. Why? Because their basic is very low. They are, they are on allowance-only schemes. Okay? Or they are on allowance schemes that help them to buffer their, uh, their, their salaries. So touch base with them. And then opportunities like that are where you share with them what strategies they can take. Some people are facing difficult times. There are strategies that I will share with you afterwards that will help them to overcome difficult times using their property. Okay? Some people have very deep pockets because they've been rational, uh, rationing and waiting for rainy days like that. Uh, they want to know, hey, how can I capitalize on this crisis to make it an opportunity for myself? I'll share with you what other things can, can be done. All right? But bear in mind, I will only scratch certain surfaces Okay. For the mechanics, you are supposed to learn in ASM or property wealth planning lessons and also I don't have time to go into the, all the details okay, in this session. So number one, one of the insights, renting may become cheaper than owning. Okay, Renting may become cheaper than owning. So how can you use that as a benefit? I'll show you. Okay, Imagine okay, if HDB prices were to correct by 10% in the next 12 months. All right? If the HDB value today is 600000 and the HDB corrects by 10%, means that it will correct by 60,000 to 540,000 in the next 12 months. That means you will lose money by holding on to the HDB. You automatically lose 60,000 if you think that the market is going to turn bearish 10%, 20%, whatever. Okay? Now, what's the equivalent for you to now sell the property first before you incur this loss of 60,000 and then rent for the time being? Okay, a HDB around 600,000 will rent for usually about 2,000 plus. $2,001, $2,000, depending on where. Some parts of Pongo, you can get $1,007. But let's say $2,002 okay, is what you spend on monthly rental. If you sell, okay, you have cash in your pocket, you have back in your CPF, and then you rent $2,002 a month or $26,000 per annum, a similar home for two years or more. You can rent for more than two years with this $60,000 saved. Huh? Okay, and then at any point in time where, hey, suddenly that condo that you like, or that, that uh, particular uh, five room that you like, or, or e, uh, EA, whatever, EM, that you, wow, huge space and everything that you like, corrects in value. It's going to correct a lot more and you will be able to buy in at a low. Okay, so this is one thing that you can do if you're, private, if you're a HGB owner, you can tell your clients. Sometimes, okay, you don't have to worry about uh, being right. Uh. Some people will say, no, la, it won't happen. Uh, uh, maybe what you're projecting won't. So let them have the concept and make up their own minds. Some people will tell you, 10%, uh, huh, I think more than 10%. Uh. Then all the more you should do something about the property that you're holding. Perhaps you need to do something so that you don't incur that guaranteed loss if you think it's going down, going down by 20%, 30%. Okay? What happens if you are a private property owner? Hey, sorry, I didn't click it. Oi, what happened? It's not loading already. Hang on, uh, let me just check. Got stuck in the screen. Okay, so what happens if you're a private property owner and the private property you expect it to correct by 10% in the next 12 months? A private property value, let's say it's 1.2 mil, in 12 months it's gonna go down by 120,000. You're gonna lose that money, okay? And it's gonna be 1.08 million dollars in value. How long can you rent for with this amount of money? Okay, if you sell it now, maybe you don't even sell it at 1.2. Let's say you sell it at a shy 1.15 just to, you know, so that people buy, buy it over fast before your neighbor realize it. Okay, so equivalent to $3,000 monthly rental okay, for 1.2 million property possible, $36,000 per annum, or you can rent a similar place for three years and that will be just equivalent to the correction amount. Okay, and then when finally, hey, you know what, maybe in the second year or maybe just after one year or maybe nine months, the market suddenly turned around. Wow, vaccine is out. Now we can, we can save the nation, we can save the world. What happens? Suddenly, you are able to buy in when your neighbors are still trying to sell at their best valuation. From 1.2, you sell at 1.15 first, right? You sold already. Then they now scramble to sell at 1.15. Market correct, they sell at 1.12, cannot sell. 1.1 cannot sell. 1.08 cannot sell. One mil. Finally, when they sell, it's corrected so much. They already lost a lot of cash, a lot of funds that they could possi possibly get. So when they want to upgrade to another property, it's very hard because they have a lot more, uh, less cash than you. So you, if you think that this, uh, uh, this, this correction is going to be huge, bigger than that 10%, then you might want to take some uh, proactive steps to capitalize on this, okay? Because if not, you're going to lose money anyway. Okay? You might as well rent and have much cash in your pocket to take advantage of opportunities. Now, next. 
<coughs> sell and rent first to buy at steeper discounts later. Okay, this is one thing that uh, some people are doing. If they are first, they must be uh, relatively okay to move. Some people hate moving house. They they make money also don't want don't want the trouble. Okay, now to sell first means you got to rent somewhere and then buy a larger home or a better location after the correction. Okay, this is what I call arbitrage. Okay, but I'm moving a little bit ahead of my, my uh, myself. Huh? I will tell you more afterwards. I have a slide for that. Okay, so just take note. Sell, rent first, buy at a steeper discount later if you are pretty bearish about what's going to happen. Okay, correction probability in the pro uh, private market is high. I look at it as a uh, HGB might not be very high, but private market is def definitely higher. Okay, so uh, you want to take advantage of it by simulating Okay, what happens in the AFC. Yeah? What happened? Example, okay, if private plot condos this time round correct by AFC standards, okay, AFC standards is what? Remember, just now CCR property lost how much? I can't remember also, <laughs> 39%. Okay, a 2 mil property during the AFC became 1.22 mil. <gasps> you save 780,000. If you are willing to take a loss first, wait on the sidelines for the prices to come down and then buy in. Okay, you would have saved a lot of money. Of course, hindsight is 2020. Okay, RCR, $1.5 million property. It went down by 42%. From 800, uh, from 1.5 mil became 870,000. 630k. Okay, OCR, one mil property became 740k. Went down the least, 26%. Savings of 260k. How long do you take to save 260k? You ask your clients, how long do you take to save 780k? One year, how much can you save? 100,000, 200,000? If you can, that's pretty good already. They say, no, I cannot save so much. I can save maybe one year, 10,000. You're going to take 78 years to save 780,000. It's probably not possible to ever own something like that. Okay, so this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I look at it that way. Why? A lot of us are complaining. We complain, yeah, our parents bought a HGB 40,000 last time. Now, HGB how much? BTO, so 200, 300,000, right? We complain. We wish that times go back to then. What landed property 500 per square feet? Why you never buy? I never buy the sale. What 900 per square feet? 800 per square feet? What never buy? Ah, to you, to you. Now the time is here. Now, do you dare? Are you proactive, or are you just reactive, waiting for things to happen? Hopefully, you get a good deal. Hopefully, you don't lose too much money. Now, most people are focused on survival, not losing. But what I want you to focus on is focus on winning. Focus on winning, helping your clients win. Let them know there are opportunities out there for them. If they want to win, they don't just want to survive or lose less, uh, okay, because that's a very sad way to live. Uh, then they have to take proactive steps today, either to sell, to gear up, to look for opportunities in the market, because they will come. Okay, next. If prices correct by GFT standards, uh, global financial crisis standards, what happened then? A 2 mil property became 1.06 mil. Wow, cheaper than AFC time. Okay, savings 940,000. How long do you take to save 940,000? Okay, 1.5 mil RCR property became 1.2 mil. Okay, a lot lesser in uh, discount uh, in, in, in savings than before. OCR property 1 mil became 860. Uh, you can see OCR didn't correct that much already. So if you can grab a good deal around 14% off right now or 10% off right now, it's a pretty good deal. Yeah, for your clients. So you can expect that, hey, if you already bought something that's uh, with good savings and upside potential, you don't have to necessarily have to sell or, or be worried about your purchase. Some people are now worried about the purchase, right? Especially some of them with uh, reissue option cases. They are worried whether to exercise or not exercise. Okay, you may want to use this to reinforce to them that OCR properties, especially OCR properties, don't correct as much. Okay? So I hope I'm not going too fast. Uh, there's so much I prepared and I, I was only, uh, I, I, have, I was, Going to do one and a half hours, but they cut short my time to one hour. <laughs> so I'll do my best to compete as much again. Okay, so upgrade to a better property or location. This is an opportunity. Once again, for properties where they are usually nearer to town, they are larger, better location, usually they experience a bigger drop in quantum. Okay, so if you want to upgrade now, now is the best chance. No, so what can people do? Okay, imagine prices correct by 20% in this climate. Huh? Okay, so follow my flow. Sell HGB today at 600,000 or uh, yeah, just a little lesser, 5,000 discount, uh, 10,000 discount, just get it out so that you get cash in your pocket. Cash is king uh, in today's market. Rent a similar place for 2-4 a month or maybe 2-2 two, two a month for 1-2 to two years. Okay, rent for a while. 
once the market corrects to what you are happy with, or you start to throw offers, lah. go out there, throw offers, like buyer, right? Sometimes they lowball you, right? Time, time for you to get back, lowball them, lowball back, okay? Now you lowball back, okay, no, you just offer back uh, something you find reasonable. You buy something, let's say at 2 mil, but at a value, you, you buy it only, something worth 2 mil, you buy only 1.6. It corrects by a whole 400,000. And in time to come, this will all pass. We all know. Maybe it takes one year, maybe it takes two years, maybe it takes three years, four years. It will pass. The whole world is working on a vaccine together. When the best minds work, everyone is so focused on one thing, that one thing has to come true. It's a, a matter of when is it released. Okay. Now, when the market ultimately recovers, straight away, this gentleman, okay, this owner has made already 400,000 paper gain. You say 400,000, is it immediate? Maybe not. Like, maybe it takes time to crawl back to 400,000. Maybe it, it goes up 200,000. But let me ask you, by holding a HGB, can it go up by another 200,000? Ask the client, you think your HGB can go up to 800,000? You can't even make 200,000 more from this property, or 100,000 more. Why don't you consider this way to upgrade now so that later, this property can go up to its past high, another new high, or an old high, an old record high. It's possible. Okay. Now, once this happens and they have that property, you say that, hey, you want to downgrade later, can. You want to say, hey, I, I bought this, I make profit, I sell back and move back to HGB. Can. Why not? After SSD, like, okay? You can always have the option to sell the property and downgrade back to HGB. You can almost pay it off already, okay, with the profits. Probably you have some excess profit, okay, on top of all those, uh, your CPF funds and uh, whatever uh, uh, equity you already had in the first place. Or you can gear up and buy a second investment property with the paper gain you have. So you have a lot more options and you can make money in a lot shorter time. Then if you just wait it out, hopefully this go up further, go up further. Not very possible. Okay, so opportunity is there. How do you convince your clients? Do you reach out to them, engage them, let them know, hey, you know what? I see opportunity. You want me to tell you how to handle this or not? Uh, this is what people are doing out there. Okay, so this is how you tell them. Arbitrage to a larger property. Okay, so arbitrage means what? You sell and buy the same thing or almost the same time. Okay, probably larger one and you make from the higher quantum, just like what I mentioned earlier. So example will be this. Okay, if you buy a property, 3 mil with 20% discount in the market because of the risk, because of market correcting. You're going to buy at 2.4 mil, right? 3 mil, 20% off, 2.4 mil. Okay, that's $600,000 of savings. Okay, now then you sell a property at 1.5 mil, it goes down by 20%. You, you sell at 1.2, you lose 200,000 okay, from the correction. Your net equity gain by upgrading to a bigger property with a higher quantum, larger unit uh, is 300,000. Okay, take note. Larger quantum properties or locations that are nearer to town usually experience these type of corrections. If you look at all the past trends, uh, the art more parks, uh, um, uh, the art the more tools, uh, the Tate, uh, all this, uh, and of course not only that area, uh, big ones, Four Seasons, uh, Yong An Park, uh, and of course a lot more. The big ones correct a lot more okay, when it comes to a, uh, a correction. So you will be better off now trading up to that, and you want to sell that when the market is healthy, of course. Because you'll earn the most, then people are willing to pay more. Okay, so this is a chance for you to take advantage also. Now, some people may not want to sell. They say, that, hey, hey, no, 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 no. You know what? No matter what, uh, I need a roof over my head. My wife would never agree to renting a place. I would always want to, hi, Bernice. I would always want to have my own uh, house. I can buy another one, but I don't want to sell and rent. I would never do that. Okay, what else can you suggest to them? Okay. How to profit from COVID-19 without selling your property. Ah, by the way, this makes a great headline for your Facebook ads ah, or whatever article you're writing, whatever video you're doing. Yeah, this is one way. Okay, There are a lot of headlines within our uh, slide deck. You just have to look at them, plug them out, create an article, create a story around them. Don't share, share some, don't share all like that and then people contact you or share everything if you want. It's okay. One. Just share everything if you want and people will read about you, subscribe to your blog and so forth. Okay, so how to profit from COVID without selling your property? Okay, let's take a look at this. Remember, if you have attended ASM, I always say equity loan is the mother of all techniques, right? Equity loan. And in this market, equity loan is really, really precious. Okay, so if you don't want to sell, very simple. Gear up. Okay, but can you gear up a HGB? No, you can't. You must gear up only, you can only gear up a private property or commercial property. Okay, so again, a reason not to hurry HGB. You have opportunity, you cannot seize. Your pinnacle and Dustin go up by 500,000, you cannot take $1 out. 
you got to sell to cash out that even that one dollar okay so get up now draw equity loan before market corrects uh, because when market corrects uh, your property will go down in value also means that the equity loan you can drop may not be as high okay currently if you draw the equity loan it's probably 1.4 to 1.7 percent okay if you just park into a fixed d or cpf even or some money market fund or some very safe funds okay uh, you probably can eliminate that interest you can level it out already okay or if you put in cpf you can even earn more 2.5 percent 4 percent even in an sa okay but not not if you, you want to use your funds later for property you cannot put in sa and i take note huh? okay so when property prices correct you will invest with these funds that's inside a fund already not in the property you're unlocking equity here put into somewhere where it's very liquid the money is very liquid for you to put in the property when the time comes okay when you find something good okay when market recovers you straight away have paper profit from the investment property and once again you have options you want to sell it pay down your equity loan so that you have lower loan instead then invest the excess in something else you can okay you want to keep the property for rental income and capital gains you also can okay so this is for people who do not want to sell their properties in this crisis want to take advantage of opportunities go and get a loan property loans are good leverage is meant to be used it's not like uh, buying stocks leverage can be very unhealthy very risky because stocks when correction comes in there'll be a margin call that's almost guaranteed margin call okay properties uh, correct little chance of margin call almost no chance because why because government doesn't want to cause panic in the market if the margin call one guy because the value drop or the property drop right then the other bank also start to margin call everybody uh, the banks will have a lot of properties they can be become property agent already now they have to sell all the properties to and, and because they cause this panic they want to find a buyer for their properties they have to accept a even an even lower offer and because a lot of singaporeans wealth are in uh, uh, properties like i said earlier so government and banks unspoken but very unlikely they will do a margin call on properties even if values drop okay uh, as long as you service your loans okay so in the gfc you don't see people having uh, margin calls on their properties you don't see that in fact the government's uh, stepped up to guarantee loans in fact okay and uh um yeah unless you don't pay your loans lah. if not you should be fine and it's so safe and it's low interest okay so for clients who are facing difficult times okay what okay Hang on, uh. okay, I'll reply to you later, uh, Baby Lin. I see that you have, uh, it's so weird to call you Baby Lin. Okay, okay. Uh, Lin, uh, which, which, who is this? What, what's her name actually? Lin Yu. Lin Yu, yeah. Okay, so if buyer say wait for resale seller fire sale to grab unit, how? Okay, now if you have a, a buyer like that, uh, I'm sure you will have one, okay? Uh, because I'm also like that. <laughs> I'm also looking to buy. Ah, if you got fire sale unit, please let me know. Please let me know. Okay, uh, I'm really really serious. Okay, I've been waiting for for, for a while already. So, uh, so if buyer says wait for resale seller uh, fire sale, well, why don't you go back to them? Ask the buyer. So, what type of price of the market price are you willing to offer? Okay, because they have to be reasonable. You want to buy a fire sale, right? What to you is a fire sale? Five percent off fire sale or not? No, ten percent off. 15% off? 20% off? Okay, reasonably, lah, now the market hasn't reached that stage of 20% off. How about 10% off? If you want to buy a one mil property, if I can get something for you at about 900,000, would you buy it already? Nah? Okay, counter and ask them. Okay, and make sure you size them down into an area they want or a project they want. If not, you'll be running all around, don't know how to how to throw your offers. Okay, once you have that confirmation from them, okay, 900,000, I find you a 1,300 square feet unit here uh, at the Riverview. You will buy, uh, confirm, uh, confirm, uh, I go and throw offer. Go and call the agents, call the whatever you can find. Let the sellers know that you have a buyer ready to offer 900,000 for your unit. Yeah, straight away. Okay, but uh, of course, you have to also make sure that your condition, everything you also put a, uh, some conditions. Uh, the condition must be how, at least moving condition, not like wow, to or, or, or at least a certain floor level facing what greener review or what. At least you get all those down, you pin the buyer down first. Okay, it's not wrong that the buyer wants the lowest deal, just like us, right? Reasonable humans are like that. We want the lowest price when we buy, highest price when we sell. Now, it's about you. How do you condition and narrow them, corner them into a position that they're ready to offer when a deal comes? Because when you find such a deal and they are not willing to offer, wow, it's a pity for them. They can't see beyond. So you got to pre-suite them. Pre-suite, not persuade. Pre-suite. Before they, you actually find the deal, persuade them. If we really find a deal like that, you must seize it. You must go for it straight away. Because it will not be a lot in the market. Very rare. Okay? So you have to do that. You have fire sale, William Lee. You better be real, uh, real fire sale. Uh. Okay? 
Oh, by the way, I don't want a fire sale of Samsung phones or Huawei's phone. I know it's fire sale. Nobody wants to buy those phones anymore. Okay. Uh, properties, properties, good ones. Uh, okay. So, uh, don't want void space, mezzanine area, a uh, lot of uh, funny uh, staircase on. Okay. These type of things are not fire sale. Okay. So, for those going through difficult times, how do you help them? Okay. Because we will have clients like that, right? And we also don't want to be, uh, you know, an agent where good times you are there, bad times you are no, no longer there. Help them because this is where you foster uh, relationships, you serve them well. And also, I think it's also meaningful for most of you to be able to do that for people. Okay. So, number one, okay, using lower interest equity loans to tie over. Hopefully, they are still employed. Okay. Uh, hopefully, they have their IRAS documents all ready. Faster go and take the term loan in case they think they're going to be retrenched or they're going to have face lower income moments uh, in the next few months, make sure they faster take the term loan because the few hundred thousand can last them quite long one and they can slowly tahan, okay? Pay their bills, pay whatever, uh, margin call on stocks and everything, okay? Use the fund, tight down, tight over cash flow requirements until the situation improves, okay? And then pay down the high interest rate loans. For example, they got car loans, personal loans, overdrafts. They will need to use their equity loan to pay off all these high interest rate loans because your property loan, equity loans are very low. It's also at mortgage interest. Huh? It's very low, one point something percent. Whereas your car and other things are really, really high. And uh, take note below, uh, if you can't see, current climate is very unlikely banks will do margin call on loans. Very unlikely because they don't want to trigger more problem in the market for the government. And they will usually come and talk to you, hey, you know, you want a debt restructuring scheme, DR, DRS, uh, where we, you know, we pay out your interest first now, maybe you just pay interest, the principal, we defer, 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 okay? So, this market, they won't recall your equity loans, okay? So, but of course, uh, still got to be prudent, okay? not to be uh, overly aggressive. Once situation improves, you repay the equity loan to lower installment again, that's number one. Another way of doing it, okay, refinance, and stretch tenure, okay? You should be refinancing already uh, yourself if you have not. Or if you have clients who um, who don't monitor the markets, make sure you tell them, hey, go and refinance your 2.5%, 2.3% can refinance down already to 1.5%, 1.7%, okay? So refinance, at the same time, some people might want a lower installment again to tie over. So you ask them to refinance and stretch their loan tenure to 75 year old. For most people, their loan stop at 65 years. Stretch to 75 years, straight away you got another 10 years runway. It decreases your installment by safe 35 to 40%. Okay, so tip for you, uh, if you have a property now that you find that installments a bit strong and then your TDS are almost on the burst, right? Or, or a bit high, right? Go and refinance lower, stretch tenure. Okay, and then suddenly you have the ability maybe to buy a second property soon when there are more corrections and more deals coming up. Okay, this helps you to low in installment for better cash flow. And once situation improves, you just do partial repayment earlier, okay, if you want. As long as your situation improves to lower interest costs, this is another way you can help your clients, advise them. Uh, mortgage interest only payment schemes. Okay, so last week I saw this UOB home loan. It's a bit small for you, right? So I read it for you. Helping you to relieve your financial worries if you're impacted by COVID-19 with interest only repayments on your property loans for up to six months. Trust me, if your situation don't improve and then the, the whole economic situation don't improve, you ask the extension, they should extend you. Okay? But the caveat is what? This is only for Singaporeans and PR who already have a loan with UOB, okay? And a good repayment history, definitely. And you are employed in certain sectors only. So if your clients are in aviation, okay? F&B owners, okay? Pub owners, whatever. Doing F&B business, hospitality, uh, service line, uh, ho hospi uh, hospital, hotel. Hospital is doing great business, I think now. Uh, uh, hotels, retail, Okay, uh, transportation, tourism, these people are barely hit, so the banks are lending especially to them, deferring their principal and paying only is interest. Okay, and your monthly income has been reduced, la. Uh, must be affected, uh, allowance affected or whatever income affected, I'm sure you can apply to that. Okay, do the other banks have them? I do not know, but if you know, please let me know inside and please let our team members know inside the... Uh, inside the comments, let them know that uh, UOB have, uh, DBSF, or, or other banks, okay? I'm sure other banks will roll this out in time to come, especially our uh, DBS bank, all right? So, what can they do? Clients in the affected industry apply to banks, defer their principal payments, they pay only interest for time being, so it's, their loans probably will drop by almost uh, two-thirds, okay? Half to two-thirds, which is a lot, okay? And then once your uh, monthly cash flow is uh, improved, right, then you can 
go back to normal payment scheme. Okay, so let them know these options are available to them. Downgrade or rent temporarily, like I mentioned earlier. Okay, renting could be a good way to avoid the loss if there's a correction in your property. So sell property, downgrade, or rent temporarily. Okay, sell property and downgrade or rent temporarily. These are pe for people who really need to tide over and uh, are going through difficult times. Use the excess funds for cash flow, await investment opportunities later on. Once they have uh, recovered, okay, their industries have recovered, their businesses have recovered, they have funds on hand, and at the correction period, right, they can always reinvest in an under pro pro undervalued property to profit okay, when their financials are better. Okay, so you let them know the war is not over. Temporary, you step back, retreat so that you can go further later. You retreat and then you can launch further, buy into something that can help you get back into the game later on in life. Okay, so don't worry about that. It's not permanent. Okay, another way, TDSR waiver for loans with less than 50% LTV. Some people are not very sure what this is. Okay, if you read a circular by, um, by MAS, because a lot of retirees have properties with a lot of cash inside, equity inside, fully paid lah, uh, 80%, 90% paid lah, and they want to draw some money out for retirement, they cannot. Okay, so the government has a waiver for loans with less than 50% LTV. In this case, you can put in your children, even though they are not the owner, right? Your children can be, uh, name can be inside the loan as a guarantor, to guarantor you getting a loan up to 50% of the LTV. So this is a way for elderly or people who still want to play in the market. They, they, maybe they're not elderly, maybe they're 40 year old and they fully paid all their loans, right? Uh, then they're not working, they're retired. How? They can use their property and take a loan with their children's name. So um, by uh, leveraging up to 50%, they have money to fund their day-to-day uh, -day cash flow issues or anything, okay? And then subsequently, if they really want to uh, reinvest them, they can also. Okay, so these are some ways that you can help your uh, clients in difficult situations. Alright, so should I wait or buy now if there's a good deal? Now I want to give you all a short toilet break, okay, because I'm sure some of you are also tired already. Some of you are on the way to viewing and so on. So I'll give you a few minutes. Uh, I also want to take a, a sip of water. So let's stop for a minute, digest a little bit what have been taught. And then uh, we come back for... Uh, part two. Part two is uh, the next about 15 slides. Not so bad. Lah, okay, so stay with me. Those of you already getting your awards, don't worry. Go ahead with your awards. I know I overrun already as I usually do. Okay, see you in a while. I mean, how you Okay, I'm back. Okay, hopefully, hopefully you are still around. All right. Okay, let's get back to this. Huh? Any questions so far? If you have any questions while well, waiting for the rest to come back, huh? you all can key into the comments. Uh, whatever I see and I can answer, I will just uh, I'll do so, right? If not, after the whole session, I'll answer. If not, the other uh, teammates, if you can also answer each other, lah, then that will be very helpful to get each other's insights. Okay, I'm going to resume. So, should you wait or buy now if there's a good deal? Because people will definitely be asking you, hey, should I buy now or not? Should I wait a little bit or not? Okay, so once you have a, a client who asks you this, you first have to ask them, hey, how much do you think the property market will correct by in this situation? 
you think a little bit, a lot, then if they have no answers, like most people may not have answers, they're just, you know, just guessing without any basis, just guessing totally, okay? Then you can refer back to our, some of our slides to show them, hey, maybe you were correct between uh, X amount to X amount. If you're talking about our OCR area, maybe even not much, 10%. Might be a steal already, okay? So, dependent on where they're looking at. And then you, you can, after that, because of some basis, right, that you can rely on, then you can discuss this. Okay? Does entering today at 10% discount, today, if you're able to find something at a good discount, okay, versus 20% lower in two years' time, does it make a significant difference when the market recovers? Okay? So, let's take a look. If today you go out there, you find a property, one mil value at 900,000, straight away 10% lower, okay? Or some other uh, client who says, ah, I will buy only when it reaches 800,000 or 20% correction. Well, if, the, if it doesn't happen, it means that this guy won't be vested. He won't have entered the market because the prices didn't meet his expectation, okay? What's the difference in 36 months' time, assuming the market recovers? Okay, this is different from the slide I uh, explained to you last year in uh, crossing over into 2020. So if you uh, have seen that, uh, that's a different version. This version, I have slide, the, the image is the same, Master Wu Kui is the same, okay? But uh, the, this uh, example is slightly different. So please follow me. So client buys today at 900,000, recovers back to valuation of one mil in three years time. So he buys market up, down, up, down, and then it goes back to one mil, okay? But during this time over, um, over the next three years, 36 months, he actually has rental. Okay, his rental, let's just assume is about, uh, how much a month? Uh? How much did I put? Uh? I can't remember. 36, 90,000 means 30,000, uh, or 2,005. 2,500, 3% rental yield. Uh, okay, 2,500 a month times 36 months, you have $90,000 gross rent received. And meaning, if the market from 900,000 goes back up to 1 mil, he will have made the equity of 100,000, plus 90,000, a total gross profit of 190,000. So the other client says, no, 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 I will wait and buy only 24 months later. So I wait out, park my funds, and then wait, wait, wait until I find the best buy. Okay, If he managed to, manages to buy 800,000 as he wishes, uh, he and the valuation recovers in one year's time, 12 months. Okay, Because why? Three years, we are talking about a three years timeline. Yeah? So he recovers from 800,000 to one mil okay, in 12 months. He would have collected Okay, also 12 months of rent at $30,000, 2005 a month. And his total profit, rent plus the increase in equity, will be $220,000. What's the difference? See, the difference is only how much? $30,000. And what is his risk for waiting for this profit? It means that he could be timing the market and losing out another decade. Maybe another 10 to 12 years that he, hey, wow, he, if prices drop to only eight fifty dollars or eight eighty. dollars and he didn't buy. Then it starts to bounce back to 900, 950, 1 mil. He will have missed out. Then when will this guy buy? He probably will only buy in another 10, 12 years time. If it corrects significantly. And if this that low is lower than this current low. Because lows are usually getting higher and higher, remember? Okay? So it may not be such a good idea to time the number one, time the market. Second thing, uh, to, uh, to wait for a correct, further correction by too much. Uh, by, that doesn't make a, a significant difference. Okay? So it may not be a good idea to wait. Is it better to invest in equities or properties now? This is a question I've been asking myself also, and I'm sure some of you also asking, right? Whether to buy the, you know, all the stocks that are, uh, <coughs> that are on sale right now. There's one thing that I really like, uh, which uh, this, uh, this, I think there was this Instagrammer who was posting. People flock to sales. But when stocks are on sale, people avoid them. They don't go to these sales. Yeah, just like assets. When properties become on sale, people, are they going to flock to it or are they going to run away? The usual herd who are afraid or are overly pessimistic, right, will run away from them. And then that's where opportunity is for, for them to make money in a flash. Okay, so is it better to invest in properties or equity? Let's take a look at a common, a, a simple illustration. Okay, it's very hard to compare equities and property directly because equities, there are so many types. I, I don't know what markets you are playing. You could be playing the Dow Jones market. You could play, be, be playing uh, uh, the, the S&P 500. You could be trading locally. 
okay, SGX stocks, I don't know. You could be trading a bank stock, blue chip stock, or maybe some penny stocks. So it's very hard to ascertain exactly. Then there's also the thing about dividend yield. Okay, most people say right now that, hey, let's go and buy some good REITs or buy some, uh, um, some stocks with a lot of good dividends. Okay, what I say to you is this. Whatever dividends you, you, you have seen right in the past 12 months, 2 years or 3 years, you, say, you can say that they historically, historically pay 5% dividend yield. These are trailing dividend, meaning what? Moving on from here, because business is affected, will they still be paying 5% dividend? No, uh, likely not uh, for most businesses. They'll be conserving cash, rationing, probably paying down uh, loans or, or even uh, struggling to get tenants and so on. So you must be very careful when you talk about, hey, hey, buy this stock, buy that stock, the yield is going up, it's going to be 10%. Sometimes we are basing on the history. And because of that, we say, hey, 10%, but we buy maybe 5% yield. Okay, so be very careful. And so take a look at this. If, for simplicity's sake, uh, okay, we say that if you have 200 plus thousand, uh, okay, in this case, 274,000, and uh, you are buying, you have this amount of money, you can buy a $1 million property. Why? Assuming it's your first property, okay? So funds required 75% uh, and 75% LTV, you need 250,000, okay? 75% other people's money, the bank's money. Uh, buyer stamp duty will be 24,600, okay? Total fund outlay, 250,000 plus 24,000 will be 274K. Imagine if this property, one mil appreciates by 20%. One mil appreciate 20%, you make 200,000, okay? Now, your return equity, uh, if you look at this, will be 200,000 gain divided by your outlay, which is your funds here, 25,000, uh, 250,000 down payment and 24,000 stamp duty. This will be 274K. That will be 73% ROE if you invested it in the property, 200,000 that you have. Now, if you had invested 274,000 into equities, okay, any equities that you buy, and let's say it goes up all by 20%, Okay, your brokerage fee is about okay, very low lah. Brokerage fee for uh, for stocks four hundred ninety three, but because most people do not trade stocks with a loan, they don't borrow and invest because it's very dangerous. Like forex can be very very dangerous also because if you don't know how to play it well, you don't have your stop losses well, you can lose a lot of money through leverage. Okay, so most people will buy and hold long term, or they will buy with what they have, meaning if it values if your you put 200 over 1,000 into equities and it appreciates by 20%, you would have just made 55,000. I, putting in property, because I took a loan and it's okay to take a loan in property, okay, would have made 200,000. I would have made about four times more than you if you invested in equities. Okay, So the return on, the return on equity here will be 55K in appreciation, okay, divided by the cost, 274,000 times 100%, okay, typo, okay, 20% ROE. So which one would you rather have? Which one? Okay, of course, these are. Yeah. So property is really a vehicle that is very, very useful and safe. As I mentioned earlier, it's very hard for you to get a margin call. In stocks, you just get a margin call. Anytime it drops below a certain value, top up, please. You don't top up, we will force sell your, your stocks straight away. This is so common. Okay, properties, you don't. Okay, so... This is a little bit of summary of why leveraging in property is common, accelerates your returns, low risk of margin calls if market corrects. Okay? Leveraging with stocks isn't healthy as the risks are higher. You don't borrow money to play stocks. Higher risk of margin calls if the market corrects. So this is the fundamental difference and where should you pump your money in a crisis. In Singapore, you must put it in property. You will gain so much more. Okay, so having said so much, uh, share so much about uh, how you handle uh, clients who are in difficulties, how you help them to optimize the current situation, and whether to buy and sell, uh, invest in equities or properties. Now, how and where should you find your clients? Okay, now you have knowledge, but knowledge is nothing unless you really go and fish for clients, look for clients. Okay, so I'm like a broken record. I always repeat myself. I always nag, and I like to nag, I realize nowadays, because somehow it works. Huh? Okay, I learn. As a parent, like maybe that's why. <laughs> okay, where are people's eyeballs? Very simple, you know. Okay, just like you are on screen right now watching me because social distancing, right? You're on Facebook, you're probably on Instagram more, you're on YouTube, Twitter, maybe Singaporeans, I'm not too sure so often. Okay, Google Plus, no more already. LinkedIn, you might be on LinkedIn. Okay, Snapchat, 
for the younger ones like me, yes, we are on Snapchat. No, I'm not. I'm not past my time already. Okay, this thing is something like those uh, the children will be using. For example, Timothy Chow, uh, this are age group one, <laughs> and the millennials. Okay, the millennials. Okay, so WhatsApp. Okay, and of course Pinterest. Okay, so you must start creating your own digital assets. And we have said this for so long. We have talked about brand building, assets building online. Uh, how many of you have done so? We don't know. I don't know. Some of you are doing very well. You have been uh, churning a lot of articles, getting a lot of, uh, uh, doing a lot of ads and so on. I've seen them. Okay, but you have to put yourself in front of more eyeballs. At the end of the day, whatever knowledge you have, how good you are, if you don't put yourself in front of more eyeballs, nobody knows. And you cannot prospect. You cannot find leads. And at the end of the day, you will suffer. Okay, your personal GTA side, do already? Nancy, do already? Do already, man. Really? A little bit, a little bit. Okay, by 205 should be done. Huh? Okay, <laughs> Bernice, do already? A little bit, little bit, a uh, little bit. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you also, a little bit, little bit. Uh, buy domain name already. Uh, subscribe to Wix already. <laughs> then when will it get done? You must force yourself, corner yourself into a timeline and then it, must, it will get done. Okay, you must force yourself. Okay, articles, write stuff. If you cannot, not everybody can appear on camera, I understand. Not everybody wants to do videos because it's costly and it requires a lot of uh, scripting, a lot of rehearsal, memorizing and so on. It's okay. You cannot speak on video, you write lah. At least you write. You cannot write, you hire a ghostwriter lah. You cannot hire a ghostwriter because it's costly. You look at my articles, okay? Or look at our friends' articles online and then you plagiarize lah, okay? <laughs> no lah, you plagiarize but rewrite, okay? Don't just copy and paste, doesn't help one. You must rewrite. You will learn the most when you rewrite something and also it's unique, you can rank in Google. Okay, of course you got pride also because it's your work. Facebook ads. And once you have articles, website and videos, who knows? Nobody knows, right? You have to put them out there. What do you want to say? Content is king. Distribution is queen. Okay, just like in English chess, king can only move one step at a time. Important? Yes, important to the game. That one die, all die already. The queen is the one that can travel a long distance. Okay, content is king, distribution is queen. Make sure people know that you have all these things, personal website, articles, videos. If you don't have money to go and do ads, right? Do $1, $2 a day, it's okay. At least do something, okay? If you really don't have, you WhatsApp your clients. Hey, this is my video, what do you think? Can you share some comments? Hey, this is my article, do you think it's helpful to you? Do you have friends who stay in the HDB? Do you have friends who want to upgrade? Can you send them an article, please? Okay, do something proactively. Okay, don't let your ego hurt you, huh? must always outreach. IGFB stories, of course, these are also another way to get a lot of eyeballs. Young people, I realize, I see, I follow some very young insurance agent, 20 over years old, huh? okay, and I see, wow, they post one day, can post like my one year's IG story, and wow, one day, blah, 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 I think 50, or I don't know how many IG story. My goodness, they are really going everywhere with their phone, but it works. Why? Because they share with me, hey, you know what, I get my lead from here and they screenshot and show me the comments, people write to them and so on. Because the young people or certain groups of people consume totally on IG, some of them. Okay, so if we don't catch up with the times, at a time right now where we have time to catch up, in the end, there will be no time left. Yeah, and we can't catch up. So please make use of this opportunity in the in the in this crisis as well. Okay, so some, some things that you can do, lead generation, uh, for lead generation and sales angle, right? Okay, I have consolidated for you some points. If you have good points, please add into our uh, comments also section so that our people who refer back can also tap on these ideas, all right? Oh, my wife is online. Hi. <laughs> wow, I'm surprised. I didn't know she's in this chat group. Hi. Okay. HDB upgraders, lead generation script examples, okay? So if you want to target HDB upgraders, which in this market would definitely sell right they will definitely want to buy and sell they still need a roof over the hips they still, still need to uh, upsize their homes okay why COVID-19 maybe this once in a lifetime opportunity for HDB owners to double their wealth and join the ranks of private property owners wow okay I think it sounds sexy like I don't know you test it okay go and test it go and do some uh, go and do some ads go and do some articles around it uh, do some videos around it uh, because this is a very good catch word right now for people to jump in and read your article and it gets searched and indexed very fast in Google. Okay, How does COVID-19 present you with a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to double your wealth in the next few years? Double your wealth, people want it. Okay, give them pain and pleasure. People respond to pain or pleasure. You give them pleasure, they want to click and read and learn. Or you give them pain, uh, how to reduce your risk, how to reduce your, uh, how, how not to watch your friends uh, double your wealth in the next five years. 
but you stay in the same home or you stay the same, <gasps> then they will want to read so that they don't feel left out. Pain and pleasure, okay? So you play with it that way. What are the three steps you can take as a private property or HDB owner today to double your wealth after COVID-19? Okay, so all these things are I covered are inside the slides already, I wish I mentioned. You just have to go and uh, play around, show only certain slides or screenshot certain slides or capture whatever I have already mentioned, create your own uh, artwork or your own, uh, your own article for that matter. Okay, next, for HDB owners with aging flats, is today's market your last chance to trade up to a better property? Ah, specificity. So you're being very relevant. HGB owners, aging flats. Ah, that's me. How? I'm scared. Hey, is it my best chance? I want to talk to you already because you already hit me. Okay? Hit the nail on his head. Okay, so people are saying that now is the best time to upgrade to a better location or larger property. Hmm, really, mad? Why? Ah, then you write something about it. Okay, so these are some uh, good hooks, I think, that can help you. Uh, targeting landlords, okay, for those of you who are, uh, you know, don't have, um, don't have a lot of savings and you are really tight and you need your, you know, you need to have um, transactions and fast cash flow, right? You have to work on landlords. You have to work on rentals. I know in good times, you might just want to do a new launch sale or, or sales only. Okay, but in this market, if you are tight, you better be taking up uh, rental deals. And it's also good for you because you'll get a lot of clientele in this market who subsequently when the market recovers may become sellers for you. Okay, So don't be so picky for time being. Now, what are the ways to engage them? You can use this method. Six ways for landlords to ride through the current crisis smoothly. So these are some ways where I earlier mentioned all the six ways. So you can write about this, talk about this, use our slide deck, screenshot in your videos and talk about that, whatever. Uh, okay, so Property Ace does that very well. Huh? I instead owe me a drink. Okay, uh, Property Ace, uh, William and Jean, uh, William Lee, Property Couple. Uh, we have a, a, a lot more, a lot more in these days, okay, in our team. So grow your own brand also. So six ways I won't run through. I run through earlier already. Okay, <clears throat> so for property owners who want to buy or are facing financial difficulties, these are topics also you can use to hook them in. Okay, how to profit from the crisis without selling a property. Huh, can, how? Okay, teach me. Okay, five methods of using your property to tide over this crisis for those with uh, facing difficult times, something like that. Okay, all these are helpful to help you gather customer base. People will want to talk to you because they have an immediate pressing need to know how to achieve pleasure or reduce the pain. Okay, so now I've come to slide 69 out of 71. Yes, okay. So I just want to reinforce, I overrun by not much, 31 minute only. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I just want to uh, uh, say to everybody one very important point, which is relax, okay? Ai okay? Remember this. This is our heng heng sui sui kiet kiet. If you didn't hear my previous talk, okay? There's a reason his, his name is this, heng sui kiet. Heng heng sui sui kiet kiet. He makes sure the economy is good and you're healthy, okay? So, uh, last but not least, Okay, uh, on behalf of Navis Management, I just want to uh, wish you all uh, safety, health, okay? Uh, your work must still carry on, okay? Prospecting must go ahead. I know you want to be safe, certain door knocking, especially if you are, you are, you're going door knocking in HGB estates, it can be very dangerous before, because of those who are at stay home, notice, uh, quarantine order, or so on. So please be very careful yourself. If you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. Uh, landed properties might be a, another choice because landed properties, we just went on a, uh, yesterday, in fact, and uh, it's a lot open air and everything. So as long as you know you're in open space some distance away, usually it's not so dangerous. Okay, or commercial door knocking. Our commercial group is also doing door knocking. Commercial usually you go just go level one because shops people are there and they are not on quantity order. But we don't go up to level two where people there might be on uh, in the, it might be residential and they are on a stay home notice. Uh, so at least some ways to balance out. Even HDB, if you don't do door knocking, you can always buy our banners, PWP banners, print your own banners, and go to the estate. Stand around, spread yourself out, of course, agents also, you must be uh, wary of uh, uh, social distance among yourself. And uh, just, you know, just be there to talk to people. People also have a lot of questions. They need answers. If you can't door knock, you at least do a roadshow to give them answers, all right? Okay, have faith in our leaders. I think uh, the leaders of, uh, in Singapore are doing fantastic work. Uh, I can't ask for anything more, and uh, we just have to have more faith in them doing their job. Uh, nothing else we can control, but just to support them, to stay safe, don't, don't, yeah, don't, uh, don't give our healthcare people more, more tai chi, okay? Encourage and help each other also, okay? So, uh, 
in down market, we easily can be uh, very disheartened. I can, we can also be uh, depressed. And uh, it's very important that uh, if you come across colleagues who are not doing so well, or, you know, sometimes you can even tell from the face or the way they, they, they speak or, or dress, uh, like all these all in black, uh, so sad, man. Yeah, uh, then I will go and sayang them a little bit. Yeah, so, <laughs> so make sure you just encourage each other, help each other, okay? So take care of the people on your left and right. Uh, it's very important for us to get there together, not just get there alone. Okay, and then uh, that's all. We are weathering all this with you. All the best and thank you for tuning in. Take care. Macham is a script. Macham is a uh, what, what do you call it? Video show.